Hey guys, Maynard's Customs here, and we're going to be looking at the Wall Link Quick FX3 Lithium Ion Rechargeable Soldering Iron, or at least so it is called on Amazon. The I was first attracted to this product after seeing one that looked very similar on the Matco tool truck. The I've had the opportunity to use the Matco one. It performs exactly the same as the Matco, and honestly, I would say that it is probably the exact same one with a different packaging on it. So, I'm going to be looking at it. Uh, first, what it claims in terms of specs uh, is actually pretty much the same as what the Matco version lists on their website. The only difference is that this one goes for 42 bucks on Amazon, uh, and the Matco one goes for, uh, I think it was between 100 and 150 dollars. Uh, this one, as the $42 price point, did just come with this unit and this tip itself. Uh, the Matco one comes in a little plastic blow molded case, uh, but it comes with a few different tips, comes with a little brass uh, cleaning thing, um, and some other little bits. But if you're just looking for a, a rechargeable soldering iron, I think this is kind of the way to go. Uh, this thing takes says that it takes three and a half hours of charge, it says it takes 10 seconds to heat up. It says that it has an 1100 degree Fahrenheit working temperature and that it'll run for 40 minutes. The, so, uh, upon first inspection, this is pretty basic. I think it is definitely a step up uh, after using this app for probably about a month or so uh, daily use in my work as a 12 volt installer. So I'm soldering things all day long. Uh, it is definitely an improvement over butane because there is no off gassing from the side that's going to melt other wires uh, and it's definitely better than the double a sort of varieties uh, in terms of heat up time and then convenience because you don't have to be keeping uh, you don't have to keep buying all those double a batteries all the time so um, as you can see, basic operation, it's got a little slidey switch here, and we'll take a look inside in a minute just to see how that works. But essentially, uh, the button moves all the time. You do have to depress the on-off button whenever you want to use it. Uh, in the off position, you can't accidentally set this thing off. You slide it up, and then you can see the LED illuminates. Uh, and it does take 10, 15 seconds or so, depending on the temperature, to heat up fully. Uh, I have found that even things like 12 gauge wire are really not an issue for this thing, especially when it's fully charged. Um, but this removable head, you can see it kind of twists off. We'll take a look at that. So this is designed to be an interchangeable tip. Uh, this is probably about a month of use on this thing. A little bit dirty right now, but I've had no issues with it. You can see on the inside, it's just a little spring-loaded thread. And that makes sense because in here, if you can see, uh, it is just a positive terminal in the bottom and a negative surround just like a cigarette socket style terminal that you'd find on a vehicle and in terms of other features we got the led light here i thought it was kind of gimmicky at first but it is kind of helpful and then at the back we have a micro usb charge port and then it does have a little indicator light uh, that indicator light will be red when it is charging and then it'll go green when it is completely charged uh, I have never really charged it or took taken the time to see how long it takes to charge. I would say that three hour mark is probably about right to full charge, but it does claim that you can plug it in quickly for like 15 minutes or so and get some use out of it if you're just trying to make a quick solder joint. The um, I have charged this a few times. Uh, mainly I was curious to see what was going on inside this thing to see if it was some sort of regulated output or, or what the I think it's about time that the lithium ions found their way into the soldering iron game uh, there are nicer versions of this I would say this is probably about a mid-grade one they make some of them have a little LED display but this one for the price was just right to see if it was even worth uh, getting into the lithium ion game so we're gonna open this up just a couple of small Phillips head screws here, easily removable. We pop it open and it's just a little clamshell construction. Pop it out from the back. You can see it just kind of, there we go. And now we're into the meat of it. So, uh, you can see we got a 
little push button switch and we'll examine that switch a little closely. So my first impressions opening this thing up is it's incredibly simple. Incredibly simple design. So you can see here our little push button switch. All it's really doing here is when you slide it into the up position it's depressing that piece of metal so it makes contact which is lighting up the LED and letting power flow through here. Uh, taking a little closer look it does look like this is a completely unregulated supply to the 18650 which I have found that to be true um, mainly because there is no low voltage cutoff for this thing so meaning that if you're using it uh, it will not turn itself off if the battery voltage gets too low like a lot of uh, drills were it, it, the light will come on because there'll still be enough power to turn the light on uh, but it will not heat up correctly when it's gotten that far down the, um, you can see you just got a couple of plates soldered onto the 18650. Uh, this is the output lead here that goes to the little switch. This is the piece that goes down to the charging component here. If I can get it in focus. So that's all this is down here. Let's see if I can get it out without just ruining everything. Hmm, maybe not. Let's see. So it is kind of stuck in there, but I'm assuming that this part down here, all that it is is for charging. So it goes directly to that micro USB. So I'm assuming it's taking that five volt input, uh, regulating that so that it charges the 18650. Uh, the only thing about the, actually we can take a look at the 18650 here. Uh, I don't see any branding on it that I recognize. It's not like a typical Samsung cell, but it's definitely just a normal 18650, 2400 MAH. Um, the only thing I will say about the way that this thing charges is that Micro USB is typically not the best way to charge these. It's definitely not the most efficient. Uh, and a lot of other devices uh, where the 18650s are removable, it's always recommended that you take out the 18650 uh, to, to charge it because it charges a lot better when you're just using the uh, you know little trigger charge function on that. Um, I do wish that this 18650 was removable. Uh, it is definitely replaceable to some extent. You could definitely remove those plates or just solder these leads onto another 18650 that you had laying around. Here's an old, I believe it's a Samsung cell. Yeah. So you could definitely take this and replace this should it ever die on you and not start charging. Um, but opening it up and having to re-solder it is a bit of an inconvenience. I think an improvement on this unit, even if it was, you know, maybe a different model or slightly highly priced, would be making this 18650 a removable, changeable cell. So instead of having this charging stuff down here, move the battery down, have this to be a little screw release cap, so that way we can open this up, remove the 18650, and especially in a in a more you know production environment where we're using this thing a lot, or if you're just a hobbyist that you know might not have this thing on the charger all the time, uh, which is advisable. But you could just pop a new 18650 in there that you already have charged up and be ready to go. Because um, especially the three hour working time, if you are just a hobbyist, makes this a bit of a damper in terms of, you know, having to wait for it to charge uh, and then getting to it. But in terms of performance, this is definitely a, a good starting unit. Uh, I have noticed in my past month of, you know, use that this has become a little bit... Uh, kind of cringy. Uh, I've had a few times where I've pushed the button to make it operate and the light came on but it wouldn't heat up so I'm not sure exactly what is in here that's causing that. You can see as we zoom in here this is a very simple mechanism. So we have this uh, looks to be the positive terminal here. Here's our positive post of the battery. So it goes through that piece of metal which does get hot when you make contact just from the transfer of current. Um, goes to this piece this piece is attached to, if we can get it to focus, attached to the bottom of the cup. You can see that little piece in there. Uh, so that, and then the uh, shield around this is the ground, which you can see our black wire going to here. Uh, all the other stuff that's going up on up here, uh, essentially all that looks to be is just uh, to run that LED. So it looks like we have our resistor of some sort, uh, and that just functions to turn on the LED. So again, very simple. Um, Otherwise, not too many issues here. I did have some issues with that switch actuating. That's why I took it apart in the first place. Uh, 
we'll see. I might order another one of these, break it apart, and see if I could do some improvements on it. Because um, I have yet to see or yet to find a replaceable 18650 cell uh, iron like this. Uh, I know there's a company, Aussie Iron, that makes a, a looks like to be a very improved version of this. Has a digital display, has a uh, gauge of how much power you have less, which is another kind of con to this. Uh, not only is it this unregulated 18650 that will drop to you know, essentially until it's dead, which is not good for the battery. But uh, you also never know how much charge you have left in this thing. So like here on this DeWalt flashlight, the nice thing about it, and you know, these 18650 cells are the same ones that are in this battery pack, but we have a nice little gauge that when you press it, tells you exactly how much charge you have. Uh, that would be a nice feature on an improved, maybe a little bit more expensive version of this. Um, because I think there definitely is a market for a better version of this. Uh, this could be like your entry level, you know, getting it into the electric soldering iron game, not wanting to deal with the cords, um, and then maybe have a little bit nicer version for somebody that's, you know, going through a production environment using this a lot. I think the key takeaways would be uh, replaceable 18650 so that we can charge our batteries and replace the cells when they get old, because otherwise, uh, unless you're taking this thing apart, it's kind of junk. Uh, also, a, a battery gauge and definitely a heftier switch of some sort. Uh, I get that it's a momentary switch, so you don't leave this thing on and, um, you know, set fire to things. There are AA versions of soldering irons like this that do have just a constant on-off switch, so I don't really care either way. But given that it's only been a month of use and I'm already starting to have issues with this switch actuating... Uh, I would say probably want to beef that thing up and let me put this thing back together real quick so I can show you how it works just to make sure I fully covered it in close detail here so you can see this flexible piece of metal which is held in by this plastic piece I can't tell that this is any sort of device other than a plastic piece that holds these components in it doesn't look like there's anything going on in there I could be wrong haven't removed it uh, but as you can see kind of on the side it's just uh, it looks to be just a hollow plastic piece that holds it but essentially when you push this thing down makes contact LED comes on and power is allowed to transfer through so it seems like this thing is the resistor that heats up and that's the only thing regulating this um, maybe a better improved version which again like that Aussie iron uh, you can actually set the watts that your soldering iron is at uh, if you know the resistance here and you know the power you have you can make that happen so anyway this is a quick review and an inside look at what's really going on inside this thing uh, if you're looking for an entry level 18650 rechargeable soldering iron uh, so far i've had good luck with it and that's me using it every day and honestly not being very nice to it so Maynard's Customs signing out.